All right. Data that has previously not been discoverable is emerging today and is going to enable a, a different way of enjoying our daily lives. And by discovering this data, we will be able to better understand who we are and the world around us. Beacon networks are starting to get to scale, which means they're going to generate a lot of data. So what is a beacon? A beacon is a battery-powered device, typically, which communicates with a smartphone and allows us to understand uh, the proximity to the device, which is at its basics. So the data that we're talking about is beyond what the data that beacons are going to generate. It's data as a whole. And, and beacon data can be looked at as more of a filter or a physical search as you will. So when you walk into a physical environment, a retailer, or any other physical environment that deploys beacons, it enables us to provide context to the mobile app, so relevancy, so we understand a little bit more about your intent. That is the physical search on it. So let's stop and take a little bit, um, a, a step back and look at data as a whole, which I find pretty interesting. So. All of the data that has ever been generated up to 2006 is about 160 exabytes, which equals about uh, a couple billion HD movies. That white line that you see up there represents all of the written material ever been in the history of time, all the way back to the Bible. So in the last two years, data is increasing at a massive rate. In the last two years, 90% of all data has been generated. That's about four zettabytes in the last two years, which is trillions upon trillions of HD videos equivalent generated in just the last two years. By 2020, there's going to be 35 zettabytes estimated per year generated in data. That is trillions upon trillions of HD videos in context. And that's largely going to be due to expanded networks, data networks, storage space, IoT, sensor data that is being generated, social media posts. So there's a massive amount of data that is being generated. So just for fun to look at, above and beyond what a zettabyte is, is a Yodabyte. So a Yodabyte was named after uh, Yoda from Star Wars, actually. And it's one with a lot of zeros behind it. It's a, it's a massive amount of data. It can be looked at as over a million data centers that would encompass the entire states of Rhode Island and Delaware. That's how much space would be needed with today's hard drives to store one Yodabyte or one cubic foot of DNA. So each and every single one of us here stores more data in our bodies than one Yodabyte. It's pretty interesting, and that is actually in our future, but that's for another meetup, I suppose. So you can look at data, this massive amount of data that we're filtering through as more of a crude or a rudimentary amount of data. So beacons provide a way or a method to filter that data, to bring more context and relevance. So when you walk into a physical space, it's more of a search. It's a physical search that tells your intent. And for instance, in here, when you walk in, if this was powered with beacons, it would know the context around this, meaning it knows there's a meetup tonight. And the publisher, for instance, meetup, uh, the app, would understand. OK. So who owns this data? This ecosystem is generated by uh, multiple parties. There's the physical space and the publisher. I'm getting time here, so I'm going to speed up. One example of a problem that we try to solve is understanding the physical navigation of a retail space. So AMC's perfect uh, user journey is to walk in, purchase a popcorn and Coke, and then go to the theater. We can understand if you don't do that and you go directly to the theater so we can provide an engagement. That's a journey within one physical space. We also have the ability to do this across multiple sites, and we did this with Seahawks and the Starbucks. Uh, another challenge we look to solve were personas and media. So with personas, we understand a little bit who you are. And we do this by understanding the apps you have on your phone, how often you use them, along with geofencing data and beacon data. So we build these personas to understand a little bit more context around who you are so when you walk into a space, we can provide better engagements to you. 
So, for instance, for example, if you happen to be drunk uncle or just chillaxing, Pizza Hut may be interested in engaging with you. And, of course, if you're a weapons lover, that'd be perfect for the political uh, time, and you're likely a Republican at that point, right? So this is meaningless boop, boop, boop. unless you can do this at scale. So the last problem that we solved is doing this at scale and understanding multiple different beacon networks and being able to understand and detect them. So that is an overview. Uh, if you have any questions, we are hiring, by the way, I didn't raise my hand, but uh, we are hiring uh, data, data engineers and data scientists and sales. Any questions? <laughs> nope. Based on the size of this audience and the noise in the room, is there anybody who has a question that they can ask in an outdoor voice? We can try this one. Raise your hand if you have a question and stand on up. Yeah, current deployments, uh, we are uh, with the Seahawks at the CenturyLink Stadium. Uh, one of our major verticals that we're tackling are the stadium. So we have about five or four other teams that we're working with. Uh, we have about 43 million square feet of mall space under contract. We have deployments in Asia and Europe as well. Red Bull's a client and customer. We're, they're going to do something extremely interesting at the beginning of next year. And there's a lot more actually, but can't disclose it. Uh, the industries that are most underusing data right now, um, off the top of my head, I would probably say facilities uh, and, and workforce and, uh, and building management solutions. Um, they, there's a lot of opportunity where they can enhance and use that data to better understand traffic patterns and flow, uh, which could use beacons to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any other questions, tweet them. For now, let's hear it for Footmarks. Thank you. Thank you so much.